God bless you, dear friends, and welcome to May 22nd Weekly Message. I am glad you can join us today. You're listening to the last day's ministry from WGM Church. Hope you all had a blessed week. Now before we start, rumors of wars, pestilence, and famine. The Bible clearly states these will all come to pass in the last days, which we are currently living in right now. I hate to burst your bubble about of hoping that the world will get better. That better new world will not happen until Jesus brings in his glorious millennial kingdom here on earth. Take a moment and let's review how the world has turned out in the last two years or so. The COVID pandemic leading into lockdowns, closures, and causing untimely changes in everyone's livelihood. Up until a few weeks ago, it was different variants of the COVID. Now the focus has turned to Russia and Ukraine warfare, along with Israel's never-ending battle against its surrounding neighbors. Don't forget North Korea testing its weapon systems. Inflation causing extreme cost increases in every daily essentials from fuel prices to groceries, automotive parts shortages to emptied shelves of baby formulas. And now comes the latest disease in the form of monkeypox. That's not all. It's bound to get worse. It's just the beginning of the birth pangs. These are clearly the visible signs just before Jesus comes to take up his church. No, I'm not talking about your church building, but the body of Christ, his bride, the saved Christians who look for the day of blessed hope of meeting Jesus Christ in their new invincible bodies in order to escape this present ungodly world on the day of Christ, the rapture of the church. And then after that, the tribulation will begin. We'll get into the details in a bit. But before we start our main message, let us begin by hearing and believing the words of God from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Today's main text comes from Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 through 14. One of Paul's epistles, Paul's letters. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 through 14. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. 
For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor un uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. He did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you, though, in through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would, they were even cut off, which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your mercy and your goodness. Today we are gathered in the name of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to hear your word of truth. Thank you for giving us your word today. May the Holy Ghost open the understanding of each and everyone hearing today's message. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Apostle Paul entreated the saints in Galatia with an earnest heart. Galatians 5 verse 1 again, Stand fast, therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The Jews and all the Gentiles living among them at the time were reminded not to be circumcised anymore. As for the reason, those who were circumcised were under the obligations of the law. Also, those who were justified by the law, Christ Jesus became useless and fell from grace. Therefore, we must realize that the liberty that Christ has given unto us, the freedom offered by the politicians of the world to the people refers to such things as freedom of assembly and expression, just to name a few. However, the liberty God has given through Christ Jesus means complete freedom from all sins, curses, death, and the punishment of hell. It is eternal liberty. The Bible is clear about why death comes, why people die. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 and 56. People die and come to death because of sin. So after God gave the law through Moses, everyone born into the world since has been born under the law. The Bible says breaking one law is the same as breaking the entire law. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. James 2 verse 10. Therefore, all those who have broken every law due to their sins are stung by death. While their bodies get buried into the grave, their souls, however, have no choice but to fall into hell. In other words, it is impossible to see the glory of God forever and ever. But justified freely by his grace to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus is to be justified, to be set from sin, death, and curses forever through the liberty given by Christ Jesus. Then we need to understand why God gave such unobservable law so that all people are born into sin 
curses, and death. And finally, what liberty God gave us through Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul testified through parables um, to the saints in Rome of the grace given through Christ Jesus and this great unimaginable eternal liberty he gave it, he gave to all who believed in him. Romans 7 verse 1 through 4 Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband is be dead, she is free from that law. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Apostle Paul personifies the law as a terrible and tyrannical husband who constantly condemns and tortures his wife. No matter how much she wants her husband to die, he never dies and he never agrees for divorcement. The wife is so miserable that she even considers taking extreme measures of committing suicide. Jesus spoke of the law. In Matthew five seventeen and 19, uh, 18, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle sh shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Apostle Paul testified that Christ died for the people of the world who suffered unspeakable harshness of sin, death, and curses of the law. Romans 5, 8 But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus said that not one jot, one tittle, will pass away from the law until all things are fulfilled. As to the meaning behind when all things are fulfilled are accomplished in a verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is John 3, 16. Meaning all will be fulfilled when Jesus dies and resurrects for all sinners in the world. He did this by imputing the sins of all people in the world into his own body, accepting all sinners into his own body, by dying on the cross for all sinners to die in his own body. Then by resurrection, he set them free from the law so that whosoever believes in him and accepts him as a new husband, he gives them his spirit so that they could marry him. The mystery of the marriage between this mysterious Christ and sinners is contained in the words, the second half of John 3.16, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Apostle Paul testified of how Jesus Christ accomplished all the will. Colossians 2.14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. By nailing the law to the cross and removing the ordinances that bound us sinners eternally of sins, curses, and death, Jesus Christ took care of that terrible husband for us that we were never capable of 
on our own power. As we wander through the valley of shadow of death, burdened with the wretched circumstances of sin, curse, and death, the resurrected Lord came in through the door and proposed to us to marry him. How thrilling and happy was that day when we received the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure it's just like the Shulamite who met and married Solomon, who was like the prince on a white horse. Apostle Paul continued to testify to the saints in Rome of this great mystery of the marriage of sinners to Christ. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Romans 7, 5-7 through 7. We have lived in extreme pain under the law and could not even die ourselves. We were living as slaves to sin under the law, and then one day, we suddenly discover Christ Jesus, who died for our sins and resurrected. By becoming the Son of Father God, we are able to enter into the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Apostle Paul testified of this wonderful fact to the saints in Galatia, Galatians 4, verse 4 through 7. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman. He was born from Mary, right? And the Holy Spirit. Made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. To the Christians who have been given this awesome liberty through Christ Jesus, Paul earnestly beseeches them not to return to the elementary education they had been taught. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Galatians 4 verse 19 Christians who have been saved and married to Christ are to fill their bodies and minds with the knowledge of the truth about Christ from now on until their hearts are filled with Christ and his image is formed in them. The Apostle Paul also testified of the glorious day of the rapture, the day of Christ, when Christians, filled with the image of Christ, will meet Jesus, appear in heaven for their wedding ceremony with Christ. Philippians 3, 20 and 21 For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Jesus will return soon. He will come for his church first, the chaste bride of Christ, before he allows the great tribulation to start on earth. He will then return on his second coming with the church to destroy the unbelieving world. He will then set up and rule his millennial kingdom here on earth. He invites everyone to escape the coming wrath and be with God the Father. Admit your sinner for not believing in the blood shed by Jesus. Repent and believe in this gospel, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must repent and believe the gospel with all your heart. 
Pray for wisdom and understanding of the Holy Bible as you study, and let Jesus lead you in truth and spirit. Jesus is waiting for you even today. The day of salvation is now and today. God bless and have a wonderful day.